Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 12.16 mid patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on some balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go ahead and check those guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So, stop grinding your face into the wall alone, and head over for some professional help now. Now, let's get onto this tier list. First, we'll start off the top laners. We'll be moving Zach back up to the OP tier. He was there for quite a while, but in the last couple of patches, he fell off really hard for no real reason. And now, just as quickly as he fell off, he's risen back up. We're gonna say that his recent low performance was a bit of a fluke, cause he definitely looks really strong right now. Uxian gets demoted to the S tier. Herring demoted comes from some negative connotation, but being here means that he's still really good. He bullies lanes hard, and he's one of the best champions in the game for taking an early lead and using it to win the rest of the map. He also scales super well, so he's not one of those champions where you feel super pressured to end the game quickly before you fall off. While Poppy Jungle got hit pretty hard with a nerf this patch, Poppy Top is doing quite well, so we're moving her up to the S tier. She's a surprisingly flexible pick, with the ability to build full tank, or mix in some damage items like Divine Sunderer and even Black Cleaver to smash other tanks. She lacks a hard engaged in AoE CC that some other tank options bring to the table, but she makes up for it with some super strong trading. This makes her a big lane bully, and even a really OP split pusher if the enemy team doesn't have a solid answer for you. Malphite's buff this patch did help him quite a bit, but not by as much as we thought they would. Putting him in the S tier was a little bit of an overshoot, so we're moving him back down to the A tier. On the flip side of the coin, it seems that we underestimated Aurelia's buffs this patch. She is not suddenly becoming some overbearing monster, but she's definitely still good enough to make it up to the A tier. We're moving down Udyr to the D tier for now. This is still very tentative. As people learn builds and play some, they could end up going higher. But for now, with his performance being this bad, he can't really go any higher. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Lilia moves up to the S tier. Being in this tier means that she's basically a good pick in any game but she's especially good if the enemy team has a lot of beefy kiteable opponents. Basically, she's a good go-to counter when there's two or more tanks or juggernauts on the other side. Udyr is being moved to the B tier here. I know we have him in the D tier in the top lane, and his win rate in the jungle isn't that much better, but I think there's still a lot more room for subjectivity here. A lot of people are picking him because he's a shiny new toy, and that means a lot of people are just building this, that, or the other, and have no idea how to actually use him. They aren't pathing optimally and really don't know what to do in fights. I think more so than in the top lane, Udyr jungle will be more decent, or maybe even strong once people start to actually play him correctly. Poppy moves down to the C tier. That Q nerf seemed quite small, but apparently it was enough to make her not really worth picking anymore. I guess in hindsight, it's not really that much of a surprise. She was already a pretty iffy pick, since she's pretty feast or famine in the jungle. And even small nerfs to feast or famine picks can push them towards being unviable. Zed and Pantheon both get promoted to the C tier. I'm lumping them together because I have pretty much the same thing to say for both. Don't let the word promotion equal these are good now in your head. They're so very inconsistent picks that will pretty much never be the best option. There's always a champion that offers more. It's just that they aren't really as horrible as the other champions that we have in D tier. Karthus gets dropped down to the C tier. Even in the best situations for picking him, he's just pretty bad in this role. If you want a hard farming AP carry, lock in Fiddlesticks or Diana. Both of them come online faster and scale just as well or even better, since they can actually start fights. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Kennen gets promoted up to the OP tier here. We thought Kennen was going to be really strong after the buffs last patch, but once they went live, not much has changed. We were a bit disappointed, but it turns out, it was just a bit of a delayed reaction. Now he's finally doing good as expected. Zillian moves up to the S tier. Our S and OP tier picks tend to be champions that have a lot of carrying power. Generally, you're thinking of 1v9 machines, but carrying isn't always a solo job. Zillian carries by enabling his allies and denying enemies the ability to play the game. If you make it to the late game with him, you should be able to have a huge sway on how things turn out. Grant is doing well enough in the mid lane that we're moving him up to the A tier. It's worth noting that there's a pretty huge difference in his performance in gold versus plat. If you're gold, you should consider him S tier or even pushing that line to OP tier. But above that, he's just a solid A. We're moving Galio down to the B tier. He's just way too situational of a pick to go any higher. He's a really strong option for shutting down assassins and some other melee picks, but as a blind pick, he's pretty awful. You just end up being a free farm lane for control mages. Given that they massively outscale Galio, that's not really a good idea, so reserve him for counterpicking. Zoe moves down to the B tier. We placed her here in the A tier since she got some pretty decent buffs this patch, but like we warned about in the patch rundown, those buffs were really only impactful in the higher ranks. 
Again, this is another pick where the lower you go, the worse she does. So if you're a mid or high plat, the B tier ranking fits. You can pick her into good matchups. But anywhere under that, you should consider a C or even D tier, and really steer clear of her. Yona gets demoted down to the B tier. He's still a super strong scaling carry, with a ton of carrying power once you reach 2 or 3 items. But the issue is making it there with the game intact. Most of the meta champions bully him really hard in lane and spike harder earlier, so they can continue to keep him down. Also, they tend to contribute a lot more to early objective fights, where Yone is next to useless. Everything I said about Yone also applies to Yasuo, but Yasuo is doing even worse, so we're moving him down to the C tier. He gets bullied harder, scales less consistently, and even when you do get an early lead with him, he seems to do a lot less than Yone would. Overall, you should just avoid picking him at the moment. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Misfortune moves up to the OP tier. As is often the case when the bot lane meta starts shifting, MS performance has really shot up lately. Generally speaking, she's a champion that does even better the lower you go in elo, since she has a really low skill floor. But right now, she's looking so good that you could almost argue her being as good or even better than Sivir in high elo. She bullies lane super hard, and while she isn't exactly a quote unquote hyper carry in terms of her auto DPS, a well placed ultimate in a late game team fight can easily melt the entire enemy team in seconds. We're moving Tristana up to the S tier. The buff that she got this patch was nice, but it was also very small, and we didn't think that'd have this much of an impact on her. And now she's able to snowball in lane just a little bit more consistently, and once you have a lead, you can do a little bit more with it. We're gonna go ahead and move Kaisa up to the S tier, but this is a bit of a nuanced one. When you look at Kaisa's stats, she's very middle of the pack, but the thing is, a lot of people play Kaisa and build Kaisa incorrectly. For example, it's really common to see people go for Collector as a second item every single game. The spike from that early lethality definitely feels good, but it hurts her later scaling. You have to build an attack speed item in order to reach E's evolution, since it's very crucial for teamfights. But right now, you're at 3 items without Infinity Edge, so your DPS at this point where hyper carries should be taking over is lower than it should be. On top of that, it also forces you to choose between Lord Dominic's regards and Bloodthirster as your last item, instead of being able to fit both into your build. At the end of the day, people will call this build choice preference, but I firmly believe that the collector build is new bait and people need to stop falling for it. Draven moves up to the B tier. Placing Draven anywhere on this tier list makes it kind of a tough call. Really, even when he's super strong, he's such a high skill floor champion that Draven mains can really make him look good. On the other hand, even when the stats aren't doing so hot, some games he just feels like an impressive monster. I personally just had a game the other day where Draven completely solo carried as the only fed person on his team. To finish things off, we have our supports. We're moving Leona up to the OP tier. If you look at her win rate, you may think that this is a mistake, but this placement is for when you build Leona the right way. Specifically, that means buying even Shroud. It was already her best mythic, and with the pretty big buff it got this patch, it should be your go-to in almost all games. The only exception may be that you get a ton of value out of Solari against some big AoE threats like Vladimir or Katarina. But even then, I'd say it's a tough call, because that damage amp is really, really important. I'd also like to point out that Rel is remaining in the S tier for the exact same reason. If you look at her overall win rate, it's low enough to put her in the C tier, but when you slap even Shroud on Rel, it shoots her up all the way up to being one of the best performing supports. Zillia gets promoted to the OP tier. Usually, any champion that has a really weak laning phase wouldn't be worth putting so high on the tier list as a support. But you're not just attacking your own lane, but you're also giving your ADC a hard time. But that's just how good Zillion's scaling is. He more than makes up for it once you get into the later parts of the game. Also, it's not fair to say that he's entirely useless during the laning phase. If you're really good with double bombs, you can set up your ADC for some decent trades. He's also really good at setting up ganks, since he slow foes down into oblivion. So if your jungle cooperates, even the most slippery enemy bot laners feel like free kills when they push up too far. While Zack is looking better in the top lane, he's still pretty mediocre as a support, so we're moving him down a notch to the B tier. If you're one of the last picks on the team, and it looks like the enemy team is immobile and doesn't have a way to stop your engage, then he's a pretty strong option. But otherwise, other tanks like Leona, Rel, and Amumu are generally just way better. Thresh moves down to the C tier. Maybe some high elo one tricks can make him more consistently, but in general, he's just not all that great right now. Other champs offer more consistency, and that's what gets results, especially in the middle elos where players aren't playing champions to absolute perfection. Misfortune gets promoted up to the C tier. There's no denying that MF has really mean lane bullying skills, but the issue of her falling off becomes apparent really fast. Pretty much as soon as you get out of the laning phase, she's next to useless. Real mage supports like Zyra, Vel'Koz, and Zerath bully lane just as hard, but scale way better since their damage doesn't fall off. Plus, those picks all bring extra utility to the table. And that about wraps things up for our 12.16 mid-patch update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where champions fall in the tier list down in the comment section. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.